Justin Smith Morrill April 14, 1810 to December 28, 1898, was a representative 1855 to 1867 and a senator 1867 to 1898 from Vermont, most widely remembered today for the Morrill Land Grant Colleges Act that established federal funding for establishing many of the United States public colleges and universities. He was one of the founders of the Republican Party. Early life Born in Stratford, Vermont, Morrill attended the common schools, Thetford Academy and Randolph Academy. He was trained for a business career by working as a merchant's clerk in Stratford and Portland, Maine. He then was a merchant in Stratford, and the partnership in which he participated with Judge Jedediah H. Harris grew to own and operate four stores throughout the state. Morrill also served in local offices including town auditor and justice of the peace, one of Judge Harris' daughters married Portis Baxter, who also served in Congress. Baxter and Morrill became close friends as a result of the connection to Judge Harris, with Morrill referring to Baxter as, "...one of nature's noblemen." And Baxter consciously patterning his business and political career on morals, Morrill invested in several successful ventures, including banks, railroads, and real estate. By the late 1840s, he was financially secure enough to retire, and he became a gentleman farmer. In addition to farming, Morrill became active in the Whig Party, including serving as chairman of the Orange County Whig Committee, a member of the Vermont State Whig Committee, and a delegate to the 1852 Whig National Convention. Topic: <laughs> Congressional career. In 1854 Morrill was elected to the 34th Congress as a Whig. He was a founder of the Republican Party, and won re-election five times as a Republican, serving from March 4, 1855 to March 3, 1867. He served as chairman of the Committee on Ways and Means in the 39th Congress. He also served on the Joint Committee on Reconstruction, which drafted the 14th Amendment to the United States Constitution. In 1866 Morrill was elected to the U.S. Senate as a Union Republican. He was re-elected as a Republican in 1872, 1878, 1884, 1890, and 1896, and served from March 4, 1867, until his death, almost 31 years. He served as chairman of the Committee on Public Buildings and Grounds 41st through 44th Congresses where he played a vital role in obtaining the current Library of Congress main building through his work on the Joint Select Committee on Additional Accommodations for the Library. He also served as chairman of the Committee on Finance 45th, 47th through 52nd, 54th and 55th Congresses. In addition, Morrill was a regent of the Smithsonian Institution from 1883 to 1898 and a trustee of the University of Vermont from 1865 to 1898. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Legislation. The Morrill Tariff of 1861 was a protective tariff law adopted on March 2, 1861. Passed after anti-tariff Southerners had left Congress during the process of secession, Morrill designed it with the advice of Pennsylvania economist Henry C. Carey. It was one of the last acts signed into law by James Buchanan, and replaced the Tariff of 1857. Additional tariffs Morrill sponsored were passed to raise revenue during the American Civil War. Morrill is best known for sponsoring the Morrill Act, also known as the Land Grant College Act. This act was signed into law by Abraham Lincoln in 1862, and established federal funding for higher education in every state of the country. In his own words, This bill proposes to establish at least one college in every state upon a sure and perpetual foundation, accessible to all, but especially to the sons of toil, where all of needful science for the practical avocations of life shall be taught, where neither the higher graces of classical studies nor that military drill our country now so greatly appreciates will be entirely ignored, and where agriculture, the foundation of all present and future prosperity, may look for troops of earnest friends, studying its familiar and recondite economies, and at last elevate elevating it to that higher level where it may fearlessly invoke comparison with the most advanced standards of the world. He also authored the Moral Anti-Bigamy Act of 1862, which targeted the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, based on the then-existing practice of plural marriage polygamy. It imposed a $500 fine and up to five years imprisonment for the crime of polygamy. 
On January 6, 1879, in Reynolds v. United States the Supreme Court, upheld the Anti-Bigamy Act's ban on plural marriage, a second land-grant college act in 1890 targeted the former Confederate states and led to the creation of several historically black colleges and universities. The land-grant college acts ultimately led to the founding of 106 colleges including many state universities, polytechnic colleges, and agricultural and mechanical colleges. Personal In 1851, Morrill married Ruth Barrail Swan of Easton, Massachusetts. They had two children. Justin Harris Morrill died in childhood. James Swan Morrill graduated from the University of Vermont in 1880 and Columbian College Law School in 1882. He was a lawyer and farmer and served in a variety of offices including as a member of the Vermont House of Representatives. He wrote Self-Consciousness of Noted Persons, published in 1886. Morrill died in Washington, D.C. on December 28, 1898. He was buried at Stratford Cemetery. At the time of Morrill's death his 43 years and 299 days of continuous congressional service was the longest in U.S. history. He has since been surpassed, but still ranks 18th as of March 2014. Topic: <inaudible> Legacy. The Justin Smith Morrill Homestead in Stratford is a national historic landmark. Many colleges established under the Morrill Act created a Morrill Hall in his honor. Morrill was initiated into the Delta Upsilon fraternity as an honorary member in 1864. He received honorary degrees from the University of Vermont, University of Pennsylvania, Dartmouth College, and many other institutions. Justin Morrill College at Michigan State University was named for him. In 1962, the U.S. Postal Service issued a four cent postage stamp to celebrate the centennial of the Morrill Land Grant College Act. In 1999, the Postal Service issued a 55 cent Great American Series postage stamp of Morrill to honor his role in establishing the land grant colleges. In 1967, Ohio State University opened two residence halls on its campus. Named for Morrill and Abraham Lincoln, they are also known as the Towers. They are the tallest buildings on the OSU campus, and among the tallest in Columbus, Ohio. See also List of United States Congress members who died in office 1792 1899